Yebo, Yebo, Yebo. Welcome to Watch Me Build It. I've stopped to do a snap um, recording of a head-to-head -head battle between my first two builds. Um, I am at the beautiful Eye of Africa uh, Golf Estate, um, which is located 15 minutes south of Johannesburg. It's one of my favorite places in the world. Right now I'm sitting at the old school Delhi, um, and this is where I've chosen to film today's event. And you've seen both of my builds now. The first one was the mid-century uh, Rolex Submariner Homage, and then the second one I'm, is the one I'm calling the Retro Diver. And after I finished the Retro Diver build, I was blown away at how well it had come out. And I want to do a head-to-head -head battle between the two watches. Reason being, they look so similar, but touch and feel is phenomenally different between these two, these two pieces. So I'm going to do a head-to-head. -head. I'm going to go through my scoring list. I haven't done a scoring on my mid-century mill sub. I haven't done a scoring on that yet, so I'll be doing that now. And in fact, um, although the, um, uh, the retro diver was based on the Debert um, uh, Omega homage, a lot has changed um, in the build, so it's going to get its own score. We're going to flip the camera, we're going to turn it around, and we're going to do a quick head-to-head. -head. There they are, my first two builds going head-to-head, -head. very similar watches, very different to one another. Um, obviously, you're going to want to know what I'm wearing on my wrist. Um, you, I'm going to be building this one up into a Omega. This is an Omega Seamaster 300 Professional um, uh, homage. Uh, we'll be doing a full review on this watch, but that's what I'm enjoying on the wrist today. Okay, so here we have the Retro Diver and here we have the Mid-Century Submariner. I'm going to go through the um, sizes first. Okay, Mid-Century Diver, on the width we're looking at 41.1 millimeters lug to lug 49.1 thickness only 13.1 and strap or, or lug width 20 mil if we go down to the mid-century um, submariner slightly different dimensions it's 42 mil so it's an entire mil wider it is it's lug to lug is 51.5 so one and a half mils longer on the lug to lug um, thickness 14.8 including its single dome sapphire crystal so almost a full two millimeters thicker 1. Uh, 1.7 mils thicker and then also a lug to lug of 20 mils okay so i'm going to be going through this bit by bit and we're beginning with the buckle and the strap on on the the mid-century submariner i've got this elastic strap um, that, that really comes out of uh, a Tudor catalog. Uh, they were issued on their mill subs, uh, or the, the French military installed this kind of strap on their mill subs. I really love the strap. It is one of the most comfortable straps to wear. You can see I've got a single pass between the lugs, it loops round, and really all, all that happens is you pull that and you clip it in there and you've got it infinite adjustability there's there's no steps or, or holes in this you can get the perfect fit without any problems whatsoever it's got nice play um, and i really love this strap the buckle the buckle is finished well enough it's it's very nice it's a hound to clip this in you've got to develop the technique so there's a bit of a learning curve involved um, with with doing this particular buckle so what i've given to the mid-century i've given only four for the buckle and I've given a full eight for the strap. If we bring it around here to to my um, well it's not mine it's going out to its owner later today and that's why I'm in such a hurry to do the review. If we come around here this is a sailcloth strap. Sailcloth on the top really nice quite stiff um, as new but that's to be expected a bit of leather on the back and then a beautiful deployant buckle. It clicks in really firmly, um, clicks out of place easily enough, and that's PVD coated. So actually think it's beautiful, and it matches the aesthetic of this watch brilliantly. So I've given an eight to the buckle and an eight to the strap. So already um, we've picked up quite a lead on this watch. Right, what's next? 
case back and movement I'll deal with those two at the same time while I've got it in hand let's keep matters with the um, with the retro sub uh, the retro diver okay so case back a nice screw down case back it has some of your bits and pieces water resistance this is a hundred meter water resistance uh, sapphire crystal stainless steel and that's running a Seagull ST 1612 movement. I actually like these movements very much. Um, they, they run really well. Um, uh, uh, the one, the, the ST 1612 in this particular Omega is running at plus five seconds a day. Um, so I think they're strong movements. Um, this one's a little bit noisy. The rotor's a bit noisy, but other than that, all is well. So I've given a 7 to the case back and a 13 to the movement um, in in the retro diver. If we come back around here to the to the sub, um, case back is nothing to write home about. It's just standard par for the course plain um, Rolex style case back. Movement inside is also an ST1612. Um, you would notice that this clock isn't moving. I've broken this movement through my own stupidity. However, the movement that came in here, although it's an ST1612, um, it seems a higher grade, a higher quality grade. Um, it runs really accurately, didn't make the kind of noise that we found on the retro sub. So there, I'm going with a 5 on the case back because it's neither here nor there. But I'm giving a 15 out of 20 for this movement. So movement in this particular unit a bit stronger. While I've got it in, in, in hand, let's go on to case finish. Right, finishing on the on the Submariner, um, yeah, a bit of a shine, um, polishing on the sides, brushed lugs, um, it, it, standard kind of finishing you could expect for this price. What what is um, to be noted is that the finishing between the lugs is pretty rough. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say finishing, eh, it's kind of um, samey samey. While I'm at it, let's do the bezel. So the bezel on the Submariner, I chose it because of the deep knurling. You will recall initially there was a QC problem here, but I've replaced that and all the rest of it. But it, it clicks nice enough, but it's got a lot of back play in it. And it's not like the, the firmest click about. You see the black the back play. Um, so I haven't, I haven't scored the bezel as highly on this one. So I've gone with a, a six on the case finish and an eight. On, on the bezel for, for the, the mid-century Submariner. Coming around here though, this is a different story. So this particular case is finished, I reckon it's superbly finished. Um, opposite to the Submariner, polish on top of the lugs, brushing on the side. Beautiful just to note how the bezel overlaps or, or stands proud of cantilevers out beyond the case. Um, uh, the case itself, no crown guard, so it gives it that, 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 that big crown feeling of, 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 of a, a, a mid-century diver. Um, the bezel itself you'll see is a nice coin edge, I find that a lot more elegant. Um, mild dome on the crystal, but it's got the nice chamfer on the, on the edge of the, the crystal. And this, this is um, the, the Milsab Rev 1, um, the, the Explorer dial Milsab had a bezel that was a lot closer to this. Obviously it had the red, the red triangle. I'm not going to paint a red triangle into, into this one. Just have a look and see how beautifully that chamfer echoes portions of the watch. And I think that's part of the aesthetic appeal. And then of course the ceramic bezel insert just it's it, 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 beautiful. Yeah. And then look, listen to this. more elegant, more restrained in the sound, 120 click bezel versus the odd um, 72 click <laughs> on the Submariner. Can you see a half second of back play? It's not the best but it's, it's, it's fantastic. I, I really, really, really like it. So if we come down uh, to the scoring, case finish I've given an 8 and I've given 12 to the bezel. And then on to uh, the, the final one before we get to the X factor, that would be hands and face. Now, you will notice I've scored those two 
30 <laughs> on the retro diver and 12 on the, the sub. Why have I done that when in fact they are exactly the same? The, it's difficult to show this on screen, but this particular watch wears its face probably one, one and a half millimeters closer to the underside of the crystal than, than the, the Submariner does. And it just gives it a different aesthetic. Further to that, it doesn't have the deep ray heart um, that the Submariner does, so you can see the rail minutes track around the outside edge. All in all, it just enhances the aesthetic so much. Um, so I, I love these double sword hands. You're gonna see them all over the show in my builds. I really think they're amazing, particularly for legibility. If I consider the dial and hands that were in this watch, night and day difference compared to, to this one for legibility. Um, uh, loom is great on this. Um, I did a, a loom shot. I'll see if I can insert that amazing loom on this watch. It glows bright at first pop and it was still glowing at 5.30 this morning when I got up sufficiently for me to read the time. Um, so there we go. Uh, hands and face at 13 for this one. On this one, you would notice um, on the build I had the, the fence post minute hand and now I have the sword minute hand. I've also replaced the um, second hand because that was what I wrecked. I bust the sweeping second pinion in the movement on a previous one and oh, it's all a bit of a mess. I painted, the, I painted that red just for a bit of a pop. I really like the way that's looking. Very legible. It's got your Arabic numerals. It's harking back to the Explorer dial. Um, I really, really like this dial and hand combo. So it's, it's got a 12 out of 15 on this watch. Just graphically, the, the other one um, does, does a, a better job in. I am finding it's the difficulty with camera. Camera is not the same as a full three-dimensional experience. Can you possibly see how this one wears its dial closer to the surface? Um, uh, just, it just gives it a, a crisper finish. Right, and then we're coming down to the X factor. I have given a nine. Let me put them in the order of their scoring. I've given a nine out of 10 on X factor to the Retro Diver and an eight out of 10 to the Sabi. I am loving this watch and it's bugging me that this movement's broken. I'm going to need to do a deep dive video just to get in there and repair it. I'm loving this watch but this one takes it to another level. It's going to an owner later today and I'm very sad about that because I <laughs> would be very tempted to keep it for myself. So 9 out of 10 X Factor here, 8 out of 10 X Factor over here. So what does that do on the final scoring? Final scoring, we're going with a 66 and a 78 66 and 78 those few things the strap the bezel the case finishing make a massive difference on this watch and so the retro diver walks away with this one um, totally walloping um, the submariner however they're both watches that i love very much and i'm tremendously pleased with my first two bullets. So, there it is, um, Submariner, uh, mid-century Submariner homage versus the Retro Diver. It's surprising how a few a few elements can make a really, really big difference on a watch. I love the mid-century Submariner homage. I, I really do. I, I enjoy it so much. But the Retro Diver just is, is two levels above that. I mean, in terms of its feel on my wrist, its look, its aesthetic, um, I really, maybe not so much the aesthetic and maybe not so much on camera, but in the hand, such different watches. So this one goes very clearly to the Retro Diver. Um, but a good showing by the Submariner homage. Again, guys, click subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, click the bell, um, make sure you do all of the good YouTube stuff and get the word around. I'm leaving my address in the, my email address in the description below. If you're interested in ordering one of these watches from me, uh, drop me a mail, 
and we can make a plan. I hope you've enjoyed this one, my first ever head-to-head. -head.